Good afternoon, sports fans. This is Bill Bostick reporting for Lingostown Gazette Sports from uh, State College at the Ramada Inn Conference Center on Atherton Avenue in uh, State College. Uh, just filing a special report because I'm not sure, given my personal schedule, I'm going to be able to do a full-blown written report on what uh, transpired here. But here at the Ramada and State College, uh, a meeting of high school athletic officials, primarily superintendents and athletic directors, from about 150 schools, school districts. Uh, we have 500 traditional or public school districts in Pennsylvania. About 150 were represented here this morning and this early, early this afternoon, dealing with the uh, big issue in interscholastic sports in Pennsylvania of competitive equity. Uh, as I put down in my uh, written comments prior to this thing, the long and the short of it is that private schools, that be it a charter school, a um, parochial school, a, scholastic, a uh, Catholic school, or a, just a flat-out private school, are kicking the crap out of the public schools or traditional schools in the PIAA playoffs, uh, prim primarily focusing in on football and girls and boys basketball. But when you look at it acro across the whole, whole uh, universe of interscholastic sports, um, I, I think there's other examples of that as well, where the private schools can go out and recruit from all different geographic areas, and they're competing uh, against schools like Central Dolphin and our surrounding school districts that are bound geographically for the most part. And it, just re it sets up a very uh, unbalanced... Uh, set of competitive uh, circumstances and the, uh, they, they presented information this morning that the, the leaders of this uh, makeshift group that's, that's forming uh, to prove that the private schools, the privateers so to speak, have a big advantage when it comes to what's been happening. They did relate a story where there was a basketball game. Uh, a top-notch public school went in against their um, private school in, in the uh, PIAA final after one quarter, the private school was up 30 to nothing. I mean, that just shows you how unbalanced that particular event was. Uh, bottom line is this group is looking to grow their base and, and gain a voice with the PIAA, which is something they have not been able to do um, over the last number of years whenever the private schools came into the mix in the playoffs. Um, They're starting out with football and basketball and focusing on that and then looking to spread it across all interscholastic sports but they got to start somewhere and they're also hoping to get things set up for the uh, 20 I think it's, it's not the 2018-19 season but trying to get things situated for the 2019-2020 season the PI, so a PIAA official in a Penn Live article accused this group of being a rogue group and I can assure you that it's not. Their, their, their primary goal is not to leave or disparage the PIAA. All they're looking to do is get a foothold, a voice, where they don't think they have one right now on some of these issues. If a year goes by and they end up meeting here in State College or someplace else and things are pretty much the same, you know, at that point... At that point, they may, there may be some serious discussion about breaking away from the PIAA, but that's certainly not really part of the, the mix here. They're looking to improve things and improve things for students. Uh, these, these people in general, if I pick things up correctly, are really looking out for the students and that they want a level playing field that where you don't have teams going into a, a state championship final and getting blown away by teams that, that are recruiting and have international players, have, have players from around the region and multiple states. Uh, it just is not a, a level playing field. Um, let's see. Let me just go through my comments for here. Again, I, I'm not going to have time to put together a full-blown report. And there were plenty of media outlets here reporting uh, Penn Live was here. Uh, Brian Linder was right beside me, uh, shooting this thing and, and live streaming it. Uh, a variety of t I saw Channel Eight. Uh, Pat Principe was here. So there's going to be plenty of coverage on this. So I'm not, you know, what I'm doing is not going to be the primary outlet for this information. Um, let's see here. Some some of you are really into this, and you know, they they did talk about the transfer rules. But, they, but in the big picture, that's really the secondary thing. 
What they're looking to do is very, very simple, and that is to split the uh, PIAA state uh, playoff system, have, have one be private, you know, the charters, the private schools, the parochial schools, broken them, breaking them down into two divisions, and then on the public side, have them have their own set of playoffs, and they're looking to break those down into four different uh, classifications. So they're going to try and keep it very, very simple. Uh, that's that's their primary goal, and there is a photo of um, of of the outline of their proposal on Lingo San Gazette's Facebook page. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here that it's worthy of mentioning. I did. Um, uh, let me get the name here. The Steelton High Spire, the Steel High football coach, did speak, and. He was calling for things to be enacted for this coming sports season. That's just not going to happen. There's just not enough time. They're looking at it one year out. So, yeah, I mean, the only other thing I did, I did make a note that uh, one, of the, uh, one of the officials here was talking about not only competitive balance, but some of these uh, private schools um, that do the recruiting, their, their players are so much bigger um, you know, bigger, and uh, you know they're they're putting they're such exceptional athletes. When you put them up against um, traditional school athletes that don't have some of the advantages they do, it can get it can actually get into a safety issue. That was one thing that was brought up as well. So, bottom line, these people, these public school officials, very frustrated in that they don't feel they have a voice with the PIAA. Um, the way the PIAA works. A lot of it, a lot of it across the state in these various districts. I think there's 12 or 13 districts across the state. They're pretty much taking their their marching orders from the uh, leaders at the Mechanicsburg headquarters of the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association. So, you know, the, this particular group just you know, the, in the, the the infrastructure of that PIAA has a hard time getting a voice. So this. This is what I think one official just called it. It's the, it's the first meeting of several that they're going to have. This is just a starting point. And uh, I talked to, the final person I talked to is Bill Hall. He was the uh, superintendent at Mill Creek, or he called it a Crick, Mill Creek Township School District in Erie County. He was telling another reporter that as far as trying to get a voice, trying to get things changed around with this simple playoff format, starting with football and basketball, he thought it was very, very doable for the 2019-2020 season. They're going to be working towards submitting information to the PIAA, hopefully getting meetings with the executive committee or some sort of steering committee with the PIAA, possibly getting a meeting with legislative um, Committees that deal with interscholastic sports in Pennsylvania. When I say legislative committee, I'm talking about committees made up of Pennsylvania state lawmakers in the Pennsylvania House and Senate. Um, ultimately, when it comes to interscholastic sports in Pennsylvania, it is authorized to do what it does via the state legislature and our state government. Right now, the PIAA is the group that's authorized to, to run our statewide playoff system. So that's a pretty much a wrap. I'm sorry for that pregnant pause in the middle. I was trying to find, um, I, was trying, I, I think the, uh, I think, I think the coach at Steel High, his name is Andrew Ernie, I believe. I was just trying to cite uh, the coach at Steel High's name uh, correctly. So hopefully this gives you a quick overview. And um, so I'm going to call it a wrap here from State College. Bill Bostick reporting for Lingolstown Gazette Sports. Talk to you later. See you tomorrow morning on the Gazette Morning Update as we get uh, thrown off the network here. Bye.